As Catan sits over Emmy, her body motionless, he stares at the light of a nearby candle as he speaks to her. I don't really like talking about this much. In fact, I don't really like talking about me much, but uh, there are reasons I was always so distant with you, so closed off. I, I was I was worried if I if I let you get too close, you might get hurt. But I think you got hurt anyway. Maybe people just get hurt. I um I'm not very good at stories, but I do have one I know. We start this story off in a small, dank, smelly room. Hell yeah. Ew. There is, is a... Is that a bedroom? Is that allowed here? I'm sorry, what did you say? Math bedroom? <laughs> hey. <laughs> it is dank, for, though. It, it is, is dank. I was with you for years. It is dank and stinky. <laughs> so gross. There is a young human polishing his battle-scarred armor and polishing his battle axe. As the camera kind of swoons into the room. Ooh, swoons in. You see a scarred katan uh, cut on his cheek, one across his forehead. We start this story a few years after uh, Katan's family passed away. After. Well, passed away is, I'm not <laughs> yeah, sure that's away. how you'd say it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, optimistic way to leave. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, they passed. They, they passed, passed on. They, they passed, passed on. They, they, tr- they, they transferred over to the other yeah. Well, well uh, I guess violently murdered and maybe other bad well, things. Well, I guess we kind of find out later or not. But yeah, you know, it passed on. We'll stick, we'll stick sure, with that. Sure, sure, sure. Keeping it PG for now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's how we start. It's still early. The kids are still awake. You know, you got to ease. You got to get them to give the chance to put them to bed. Then well, like there's the, the, you're, just, you're just getting on the road. You don't want to hear murder. <laughs> why, why not? What? That's, right. a, that's a good. Is it a mystery? Murder? Is this a murder mystery? No. No. That, okay. The, yeah. No murder yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, no Maybe Katan killed them the whole time. Bum, bum, oh, bum. oh, wait. No. Did I just ruin Jake's story? Yeah. Actually, we find out that Katan murdered his own sister <laughs> <laughs> and all the like love and feelings that we've had in the past episodes that were all just a lie. Uh, not to him. That's how he's coping with it. <laughs> It's got a real Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing I'm going crazy. on. crazy. <laughs> uh, you are inside of the Church of Sonore, waiting to be called in by the Grand Inquisitor. Um, as you oh, are... God, I hate that guy. Wait, do I? Uh, do you? I don't know. I haven't met him yet. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I've known him for four years. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I wouldn't say you you probably haven't actually talked to the Grand Inquisitor. Oh, okay. Probably so this, is, this is a big deal. Yes, this oh, is a big okay. deal for you. This is like this is like you getting ready for like the big promotion. Like gonna maybe talk to talk to your good old god, Sonare. Maybe. We'll see. And as you are sitting there uh sharpening your battle axe, a priest kind of walks into the room. As he walks in. Is he doing it himself? Yeah. <laughs> Love, that. <laughs> yeah. Love that for him. <laughs> Kat- Katan becomes more serious looking, but you can tell it's almost like a reflex. Like like when you're in a bad mood, but you want to look happy for your kid. You're like, oh, hey, yeah, that's great. And as soon as they turn around, you're like, <laughs> Katan's my clan. The Grand Inquisitor is calling for you. Ring, ring. <laughs> Ring, ring. His eye twitches at how annoying he finds this. Uh, <clears throat> yes, of course. I'll, I'll, I'll be uh, right. Um, sh- shall I follow you? First, though, he hands you a whip. You must whip yourself three times. Hi. And as Only he three? <laughs> says that, you hear can another I, man walk in. Can I do more? <laughs> can I whip you? Gerald, can we... He doesn't have to whip himself. I'm <laughs> look, Katan. Uh, sorry. He he can get a, a little ahead of himself. You yeah. You can just follow us. You don't have to whip yourself. 
And Gerald, please, for the love of God, stop singing. You're not in the choir anymore, okay? I'm still going to sing. <laughs> <laughs> As he starts to leave, Catan hands him back his whip, like, hey, yeah. <clears throat> No, you'll be needing that. <laughs> <laughs> I love okay. this guy. Katan adds whip to his inventory. <laughs> yeah, flagellation uh, instrument. <laughs> hey, it's a weapon. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Anytime I think of, every time I hear the word flagellate, I just think of farting and it it's, it's close. close. Yeah. yeah it's it's close. It, the first time I heard that, I thought they just like were farting. <laughs> on themselves. <laughs> yeah, I'm self-flagellating. And then like, sort of oh, torture. Like I don't like want to know what the alternative in a, is. In like a ball, like a well, bubble you can boy. like you can bend your knee. You put like your your ankle on it. Yeah, you, like, could, you could fart on yourself. You well, could, yeah, really well I was thinking more of like you had like because it was but for like tenants. Inf- yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's penis, so like you like put yourself in a small like enclosed a little like, fart balloon. box. Yeah, like will you like eat a bunch of beans? Well, you do it like you do the you do it like you do cologne. You just angle it up in the air. You let one rip. You turn around, you just walk through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Well, I was gonna say it's how it's it's that day and age where people do the hose in the exhaust pipe, you know, to oh, give themselves that. It's yeah, yeah. It's just oh, a little fart just box. A, a little fart just a little fart box. box. Oh. I didn't t- I didn't mean the hose up there, Jake. <laughs> yeah. that's, not, that's not quite what I was meaning there. It's like a funnel system, obviously. Uh, obviously, yeah. to like obviously. Okay. So in regards, uh, hey, question. Okay, okay everyone. Hey, 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 I got a serious question hey, here. I have the whip here. Okay. All right. <laughs> So, Jake, who the fuck was actually talking to Gerald? Like, the guy, Gerald was the guy coming in singing and telling me to come and get the whip. Uh, another priest that I didn't think of a name for yet. Okay, so some other priest who clearly outranks Gerald. <laughs> or <laughs> and just I actually a, I think, listen I think, to. I think they're, they're, they're probably the same rank. They're just, you know, they're just buds, and he's annoyed with Gerald. Me too. Yeah. Uh, I love Gerald. I want more. Don't Will I? you follow us now, Katan? I do. Uh, and I do what this guy says, not because I respect him, but because I just want to be over with his presence. <laughs> um, and you start to walk down these uh, dark hallways with little sconces every like 20 feet, uh, just enough to see where you can go. Like wh- you're just enough to see every here and though, like when, right when you get in the middle of it, it's like just dark enough to where it's like hard to see. And you get a little bit of light again. And a little dark, not a little. And then you're at the door. And in front, you see two paladins, great swords sitting on the ground, great swords in their hand, the tip pointing to the ground. Very good. Go. Yeah, all right. I know how to, I know how to word that. <laughs> As uh, Gerald and the other priests approach the door, the paladins slowly open it up. As you can see, a long hallway with a great statue of Sonare, the very other far end. And you see the Grand Inquisitor with this lavish clothing, white cl- uh, cloak with a gold emblem on the front of Sonray's symbol. And he is sitting at this giant mahogany table. As you walk in, you see two other individuals kind of on either side of the room. And you approach the Grand Inquisitor. And as you do, you see uh, Gerald and the other priests kind of bow to the Grand Inquisitor as he like looks at you waiting for what you're going to do, Catan. They just bowed at the Grand Inquisitor? Yes. I, I... But I'm like standing in front of the guy, right? Like I'm yes. presenting myself to the Grand Inquisitor? Yes. I, I kneel down. I actually put one knee on the ground and like, a, like almost like a fealty service kind of thing and a bow all at once. Okay. Uh, as you do that, you see the Grand Inquisitor raise a hand. You may stand, Catan Smite clad. This would be the first time for us a meeting. I'm sure you've heard of me. Zindel Shmams. I'm about to make... Catan, Catan makes a will save to not, like, chuckle under his breath. You roll a 16 plus uh, one. <laughs> you just... You just, you just <clears throat> Uh, you get an uh, elbow from one of the priests as you can see him kind of putting his mouth is over, his hand is over his mouth trying to like, you can hear him. Did I just hear a 
snicker as you hear the Grand Inquisitor start to stand up and grab his staff and like try to look really tall, but he's only like four two, so he's really short. Oh, wait, what is he? He is a human. He is just a very <laughs> small a, human. I love it. Is his staff taller than him? Very. It's like it's like three feet taller than him. I have brought you here. So I have a mission for you. You have still yet to hear the word of Sonoray, correct? <clears throat> yes, the Dawnflower has yet to grace me with her presence. Well, we have been getting word that there has been some sightings of undead near the town of Chesterfield. I'm going to send you with another initiate. And we will give you, we will ov- obviously have a ward go with you to protect you, uh, to make sure nothing bad happens during your search. And through this, hopefully, you will be able to find faith enough to where the dawn flower will speak to you. And he, walks around the table as you see him kind of like lower the staff and kind of drag it behind him as he steps down off of the little uh, podium that his table is on. He walks over to you as he looks up and he snaps his finger a few times as Gerald runs away for a second and then comes back with a three-step step stool and sets it in front as he walks up the step stool, Jared. <laughs> ring, 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 ring. Bow, Katan Smite Clad. I, I bow. I kneel down. I do the same thing I just did before, although now I'm too short, so now he can't reach me. <laughs> he <laughs> holds up his staff, but you can see just behind him, Gerald holding the bottom of it to help with the weight. As he positions over, he taps your right shoulder. He taps your left shoulder with this thing. I bless you with the powers of Sonoray. And I wish you the best of luck. Now, Katan, I will let you introduce yourself to your compatriots that will be going on this journey with you. And there is a carriage outside waiting for you all. Of course, uh, your, I, I shall carry out your orders. Uh, we shall go to this field, uh, this Chester field, and uh, search out uh, any, any wrongdoings, any, any undead or, or nefarious evil plots, um, and, and, and eliminate them as, as we see fit. Uh, a, a question, uh, if we happen to, um, and I, he's, he's so awkward because now he's like, he has to get back up to get back at eye level with him. He doesn't quite know where to like be. <laughs> uh, and if our if our um, if our search comes up short, uh, uh, um, I'm, I mean, if if we don't happen to uh, find anything, not, not that not that this is a tall order. I mean, I mean, it's it's not too hard. I, um, what should we do in the event that we do not find any problems? If you do not just report, and if you find something that you are incapable of handling, you can well report that as well. Yes, if the problem is too lar- large, then yes. Uh, yes, sir. I know it isn't nerve-wracking to be in front of such holiness. A man of your stature is impressive. I know my aura exudes my height. Yep. Yes, yes. <clears throat> yes, your holiness. I shall carry out your orders with post-haste. I have other matters to attend to, so I shall get back to work. Good luck, and may Sonare be with you, as he kind of flips his coat around the step stool and takes a few steps down and, and walks out uh, of the front doors with the paladins falling, uh, falling behind him. Uh, you are left in the room as the two others uh, that were inside start to walk over um, Start with Christy. Christy, would you like to introduce yourself? No. Okay. Uh, well, then, shit. 
Okay. What do I see when she walks over? Uh, okay. So where where are we at right now? You okay, guys are in, in like room? his office. Yeah. Getting ready to leave. Okay. Uh, you are going to see this woman. She's about in her late 20s. Uh, kind of fuller figured. Looks like she eats well, but she's not like, you know, she's curvy, but not too curvy. And she's got this big curly brown hair just spilling out all over her shoulders. She is dressed in like these very fine lavender and gold trimmed leather armor-ish thing, but it's very fashionable. And she's got her, she's sitting on the chair and she's got a little file and she's just working on her nails. Uh, yeah. What do you want? <clears throat> I, I, um, I was never given this lady's name. My apologies. Uh, I believe, where are my manners? Uh, I am Catan Smikelad. I am a initiate of the um, <clears throat> Paladin Order, although I'm still in, in training. Oh, okay, okay. You're not supposed to be in here. Um, I'm waiting for someone like really important. So if you could just excuse yourself, that would be great. I'm I'm here to work with like actual Paladins. So thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> Bye. E yes, I think we're both waiting for someone really important. We okay, maybe you're supposed to be waiting in a different like worse office because this is like where the really important people go so like maybe you could just stay outside and wait for your turn yes perhaps there's been a mistake God, I hope obviously there's, a, there's yeah. been a mistake i'm not supposed to be with someone like you so if you could just again please because they're about to show up and i really need them to like be impressed so if you could just go that'd be great clearly there's been an, uh, a mistake uh someone as lowly as myself would never be uh assigned to a team with someone as illustrious as you Right. I'm just saying, like, I'm waiting for, like, an actual paladin. Correct. And, like, you're not a paladin, right? That is correct. Okay. So, like I said, if you could just wait outside so that the paladins can come in and we can do our thing and get our team together. And then you can do whatever you're going to do with the people you're going to do it with. Okay. I will. And she goes back to filing her nails. He just sort of, like, positions himself away from her and then just continues to wait. Uh, and as you continue to wait... Uh, Matt, you open the doors and enter the room. Would you like to tell us about your character? Yes. Uh, so when the doors open, and because we are in... Oh, I forgot her name. That's okay. She wasn't going to give it. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> because we are in the, the palace of Sanre, everything is, is very bright, light, open, welcoming. And as this figure opens the door and starts walking in, there's almost like a 10-foot shroud around him where the light almost seems to dim wherever he goes but his appearance is still shining bright and brilliant he has pristine plate armor that has been perfectly shined and his skin is a porcelain white almost ghostly in its appearance hair white eyebrows white eyelashes white he is he almost looks like he is a glow inside of this dim shroud as he walks in and he takes a few steps towards the two uh, sitting on the, I, I think you guys said you took a seat. I just kind of, I've got my feet up on the desk. Yeah. Okay. I, I made myself look like I wasn't <laughs> there to be with her, but I kind of am afraid that I am. Sure. <laughs> so he'll, he'll, he walks in and he has a wide eyed, vacant blank look on his face as he saunters into the room and takes two long glances at the initiates in front of him. As soon as uh, Gatan notices that he's here, I assume I would know this guy, right? Like he's... Yeah, he's mm -hmm. one of the main uh, wards, I would say, like one of the, one of the main teachers to help mm -hmm. guide people into the light, yeah. as they would say. So, so he's... Think of, think of him as... as it's like a drill sergeant almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah training. He's a instructor. he's a he's a train. Yeah. He's an instructor. <laughs> okay. Uh, Katan stands at attention, um, almost militaristically, before he remembers that there's like a, a different like thing he's supposed to do with uh, the religious order, which then he didn't. He then shifts into that. <clears throat> I'm, I'm uh, gonna and I would address sigh, him by name. Sigh loudly. And just like oh, not you. <laughs> uh, and I stand up. Finish it. May the light bless you both. Uh, yes, and may the light um, bl <clears throat> bless you as well. Yes. Uh, yeah, blesses and all that. 
Hello. Hello. Are you supposed to be our guide? Yes. Word thing? I'm here to shepherd you into the light of Sonray's grace. Cool. Um, Is he supposed to be here? Because I was told it was going to be paladins and like a lot of strong guys and like you two aren't that. So uh, am I maybe supposed to be in the different room? Maybe maybe down the hall? Initiate Katan. <clears throat> yes. You've been with us for quite some time. Uh, four years, two months and 38 days. Your eyes do not have the light. Yes, I, I am here to learn. Uh, perhaps with your guidance, we can rectify that. It is not my guidance you seek. It is that of Sonre. I merely walk the path that is given. Perhaps you could help show me it. Perhaps. Sir. And he puts the back of his hand on your cheek gently. Your skin <laughs> makes me cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes when I you touch myself, and he I looks, cry too. He looks away. You. Yeah. What is your name? My name is Magnolia Marble Creek, and you can call me Maggie because I like that name better. Um, Sorry, Marble, what is your name? Marble Creek. Marble Creek. Yes. Please write that down. Do you need me to spell it for you too? Um, is that a yes? M A R B B. Oh. <laughs> You're spelling Magnolia. Like, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> the last name, obviously. That's the one you need to know. The Marble Creeks. I'm sure you've heard of us. Anyway, um, the light in my eyes. Yeah, if it's not there, it's because I've been waiting for my new concealer to show up. I've asked the priest like seven times to have it ordered and they keep telling me it's on its way and it has not arrived. So yeah, I look a little dark around my circles right now because like I'm so, <sighs> I'm sorry. You will not be receiving such things. I, I need my concealer. Are you kidding me? And that is why you have not seen the light. Okay, well, I would see the light if I had light around my eyes. You hold on to such things that are tangible, physical. Yeah. These are not things you need in order to walk the path. Right. Okay, well, maybe not for you, because, like, you have not even touched a bronzer in I don't even know how long. Um, but I do because I want to contour. So like I need that stuff. If you could just maybe put a word in to get that right away, that'd be great before think, we head out. I think actually he is wearing bronzer. I think this is as good as it gets. Oh God. Okay. Anyway, are we supposed to be, is this my team? Like seriously? Um, I, yes, Maggie. Uh, Maggie, yes. Hello, my name is Katan Smiteclad. It's a pleasure to meet you. And uh, this is instructor... I yes. <laughs> Maggie, I am instructor Jerome Popery. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Popery? Instructor. Instructor Popery. Okay. Yes. Professor invokes that of intelligence and book reading. I need not these things. Again, I am guided by the light of the Dawnflower herself. Uh, yes. She is the only mm. teaching I need. Of course. Instructor Popery is a, um, <clears throat> a lustrous member of our society and has shepherded countless uh, clerics and paladins through the Order. I am, uh, we are blessed to be given their guidance, and we should honor and respect that. So uh, blessed. Maggie. Absolutely. We will see. Yes. We will see. Okay, I just need to get my, like, ordaining ship or whatever it is you call it so that I can get out of here. So do you want me to, like, polish your armor or, like, sing you a song? I have a flute. I got a lute. Um, whatever you need, I guess. And then I can just be on my way. Where does the path lead you? The path? What What do you mean? The like, destination you are trying to reach? To home? Yeah, I want to go home. So I have to get this over with so that I can do that. Sometimes it takes years, decades for some issues to see the light. Okay. I don't have years. Okay. So like, 
I need to be on the inheritance list before my dad passes away. And if I don't get my ordainedship, is that what they call it? I don't actually know. Anyway, if I don't become ordained by an order, by the time he dies, I'm off the list. And you don't understand what that means. Okay, my great, 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 was a paladin. And he ordained that anybody who wants any of our money from the Marble Keek estate needs to have ordainedship. So I need that, okay? Just I just sign a little paper and I'll be out of the way. I don't need a light. I don't need to see a light. I just need to get... I too was once where you stood. <sighs> I saw the path before me. I was not clear on which direction it would go. I'm very clear. There are certain things you can do to speed up your destination on the path. Okay, and they are? But with some come great sacrifice. Are you, are you needing like money or? Again, you hold, Close? you hold on to such tangible objects. My family could get this place like really updated if that's like what you She guys turns need. to Catan. <laughs> as, as she says that, Catan looks around at like the marble inlay, gold trim, ivory <laughs> statues and just goes like. It's a little outdated, just. It's it's kind of you know Renaissance yeah it's mm-hmm. that's kind of the, it's kind of our thing. Shall we commence our journey, initiates? Mm, yes, of course. Uh, uh, mm. I guess Instructor Popery, I am at your command. Uh, I I understand that we are to head out to uh, cl- uh, Chesterfield. I yeah. almost saw that Clove Cloverfield. That would be a very different story. <laughs> very different thing. <laughs> that would be a very, we are way under leveled and overfucked. <laughs> um. We will be heading out to uh, Chesterfield. Uh, <clears throat> is there anything? Uh, I understand that uh, there have been an undead issue uh, arising. Uh, I am I'm at your service. Uh, simply uh, point me in the direction I need to go. Yes, stay close. While my light may seem different to you, it is still under Sonray's grace that I have it. Of course, I wouldn't. Yeah. Without question. You said undead? Like. Were you briefed? Well, I was told that I was just going to have to come in here, like I said, sing a little song, shine a couple pieces of armor, and I would get right out of here. Yes, before you came to the altar, but were you briefed by the. Um... No, they just told me to go wait in the room. And the paladins were going to show up, and it was going to be an easy ride, and I would just have to sit here, listen to them, and then go on this like stupid little adventure and then I'd be done. Yeah, the stupid little adventure. Did the right. Grand Inquisitor brief really, you? Okay, well, I didn't really listen. Um, <laughs> he's kind of tiny and so it's just really funny to me and so I just kind of like made up a little story to myself about him. I, I've actually done that too. But, okay. but so, you do need to listen to the Grand Inquisitor. <laughs> May I hear these stories? <laughs> Absolutely I am curi- not. <laughs> I am curious of the stories of the Grand Inquisitor. Not to you, we can, no. Maybe we can tell you on the road. We, we probably should be, of course, unless you wish to hear them now. This seems I just like don't not wanna... the time or place in his office. <laughs> Do I have to touch any of the undead, I guess, is my question. Like, am I going to have to smell them? Uh, or like, are they in like a pen and we just kind of like blast them from afar? I do not know. Okay. I just, I don't really actually like, I don't I really say, do undead. So. Be ready for anything. Okay. And uh, use, use son Ray's power. Yeah. Ray's- uh, Maggie, I, I don't know how much experience you have in physical combat, but I will be a frontline uh, combatant. So perhaps of course you can you just will. stay behind me. Of course you will. And, okay. and then you won't have to smell them. Perfect. You're, you're welcome. Okay, great. Yes. Then I'm fine. Everything's good then. She doesn't say thank you, does she? Matters not. Words have no meaning. Sure. See? No meaning. So it doesn't matter. Anyway. We're ready to go, I guess. Well, you're a lot of words, so okay. <laughs> Down the hallway, you hear... <laughs> Gerald, <Your>, goddammit! <laughs> your carriage is ready. Music to my ears as always, Gerald. Thank you for regaling us with your beautiful song, Bird of a Voice. He does a very overdramatic bow towards uh, Instructor Potpourri and... Thank you. Sonray has, has truly blessed you. Now follow me to your carriage. 
don't encourage Matt, him. Matt, can you do something for me? Can you auto-tune all of this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that it's not. <laughs> like he's just using a president, uh, a president citation the whole time or like through liturgy or something. Uh, like he exclusively talks with an auto-tune, i.e. On. through liturgy on. <laughs> Uh, as you follow, follow Gerald uh, to the carriage, uh, you see that you have a driver. He looks kind of creepy. He has like a, a mutton chops that are like four inches long. He has like very uh, wrinkly skin that looks like someone's like almost like he got like aged like a raisin. His hands are weirdly long and the knuckles are way oversized for the amount of uh, skin he has as he's like clutching on to the reins. And as he turns his head and you can hear like, Hello. Are you the ones I'm taking to Chesterfield? Ah, Fishburn. Good to see you again as always. Yes, Drone. My favorite holstron chauffeur at the reins. I feel very safe with you. You should. My long fingers and sturdy knuckles hold these reins very tight. <sighs> yes, the control you have over these beautiful animals is unmatched, Fishburn. Well, if you all are ready. <laughs> um, can I wait for like the next one, maybe? No. No. Oh. Uh, this is the only carriage that takes anyone to Chesterfield. <laughs> hey, everyone. It's your favorite player, Matt, and welcome to this week's Middle Break. Two side stories back to back. Ooh. What? Yeah, okay, look, we have some life stuff that happened, and so we had to take a little break from the main story for this little chunk again, but what a perfect time for us to do the Catan backstory. We know you've all just been dying to get your grubby little ears on. Is that something? Is that how you'd say that? We'll get back to the main story in due time, but we we are very excited for these characters and where this little side story takes us and for you to get to know a little more about Catan's very, very humble beginnings. But even though the characters and everything else are a little bit different, how you can help us stays exactly the same. Subscribe, rate, and review to our podcast wherever you get our podcasts from, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever podcatcher you use, get on there, hit that subscribe button, leave a five-star review, and write a little write a little write-up about why you like our podcast so that people who also come across it can maybe see why you like it and your your likes might align. The stars might align. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Something else that's pretty beautiful is all our social media platforms. You should be following those, okay? You can find us on Twitter at New Crits and you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at New Crits on the block. We're always posting content on there. The best way for you to help us out there is by sharing that content, not only to your own platforms, but possibly even tagging people that you think might enjoy it. We're only growing through word of mouth right now. So going that little extra mile for us helps us grow and helps us continue to do this podcast that you love so much, right? Because you do... you. You do love it, right? One of the ways that we like to give back to all the amazing, amazing people we have out there helping us is we have a Discord for new crits. That's right. It's a Discord for all things new crits, but not all things new crits. Of course, we have channels in there where you could talk about the show. You could talk to the cast members. You could talk to other fans, talk about theories, talk about past episodes. Or if you just want a cool place to come hang, we got that for you too. Over the last couple of years, we have cultivated a very accepting, safe space that we want to invite everybody to come join. So if you're listening to this right now and you haven't joined it yet, what the flip are you waiting for? Come on in and join the fun. Now, you might be thinking, well, Matt, I want to help you do all these things, but how do I get to all the places that you just mentioned? Well, from our link tree, of course, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Newcrits on the block. We'll get you to all the places that I mentioned and some places that I didn't even have time to mention. L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Newcrits on the block it is your central hub for all things Newcrits. All right, everyone, let's get you back into this week's episode, the beginning of Catan's very heroic and righteous tale, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. As you know, we come out with new episodes every single Monday. That ain't stopping anytime soon. So we'll get you back into this episode right now. 
We'll see you next week. Be kind to each other. Be excellent to each other. We love you. Bye. Bye. Uh, fish, yes, Fishbone, thank you. Uh, we will happily uh, take the... Um, oh my god, you know we do have clerics here who can treat that as he points at his knuckles. This is what riders on the open roads have. If you do not have knuckles like this, you are not a true carriage man. <laughs> Technically, Catan, <laughs> Technically, Catan still has proficiency. Man. Man. <laughs> Technically, Catan still has proficiency in medicine, but he only rolled a seven. So, uh, yeah, that definitely isn't a. Um, if the horse tries to break free, how are you supposed to hold the reins with non rheumatic hands? But okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I have like a hand cream or something you could like maybe try. Did you just say hand cream? Yeah. Like a moisturizer. Have you heard of it? <gasps> Jerome. Yeah. Do they not know? You're not supposed to use those items. Mm. I have been trying to tell them also. It's bad for the leather of the reins. Wears down faster. I mean, everybody needs to be like moisturized and have like conditioner. Like leathers stay nice when you like condition them. So like it's probably fine. If that is how Sonray wills it. We we do worship the light here. We spend a lot of time kind of dried out. You look over Katan has the most chap lips you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all need like a lot of products. Like we, we probably just need water. <laughs> that too. Um are you Please sure? get inside. Uh, okay. I am on a tight schedule okay and yep. i'm gonna hold my hand out okay to katan uh, well, katan's actually a- a- i was gonna say katan was starting to open the door for her mm-hmm. as like a sort as, as a gesture and he opens it and notices that she wants to be helped in and is like <sighs> and okay so he takes her hand it's very rough and dry <sighs> yeah you asked for this thank lady. you <laughs> thanks and i'm gonna sit down as far away from the driver as i possibly can <laughs> Well, he's probably outside. Yeah, it's a yeah. carriage. Still, still positions far <laughs> away. <laughs> I don't even want the little window to peek through. <laughs> Immediately, I don't want to smell. like a limo. Is that yeah. what you're talking about? <laughs> like there's up. one little drape. She rolls it. <laughs> no, no, it's a no, drape. It's, one it's a drape. drape. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anything. He starts to talking. Do. Yeah, yeah. So, where are you guys going? <laughs> yeah, you're staring, but it's slowly like. <laughs> and yeah, he's like, moves it gets stuck halfway. And he moves his head to try to get the last little. No. I have important details about the mission. And and for some reason, there's no sound with a closet drape. It's magic. Um, I love it. It's magic. Uh, Katan looks over at at Instructor Potpourri. Me. Me next. I don't don't actually care, sir. I just was trying to be polite. No, I mean, your hand. (laughs) Katan puts out his hand. And when you when he grabs it, you feel his skin is on fire. It is hot to the touch, hotter almost to the point where you pull your hand when away. When he touched me earlier on the cheek, did I notice that? Yeah, but it okay. was it was at the back of his hand. Back of the hand, yeah, back and of the hand. Back of the hand, and it was it was a very light touch. This because he's using it as leverage because mm-hmm. he isn't full plate mail to have himself up. It's it's burning, almost burning you to the touch, and he gets himself. Yeah. Thank I like you. I like the idea that when he gets in because of the plate mail, the whole thing shifts to yeah. one side. <laughs> and then Katan gets in because he's also in full plate mail. It shifts back. <laughs> uh, appreciate you initiate these knees at this point after this many years of wearing this armor has become a bit stable. Yes, well, uh, in, in this story, I'm 10 years younger than I was before. So actually, I feel pretty great. My knees are wonderful. <laughs> And I am in my late 30s. I didn't mention that. So. <laughs> <laughs> is he, by the way, is he a human? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So everyone's, everyone's human this time. Yes. Mm-hmm. What a surprise. A, 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 a zealot religious uh, order I mean, for some it's... reason only has humans in it. I thought Weird. about somebody else and I just was like, nah. Weird. That's for humans. Um, yeah. Is that an impression I get here? Is everybody a human? For the most part, yeah. Yeah. There might be like some like half-bloods. But for the most part, it's yeah. mainly humans. And is there like outward like problems with that? Or are they just, it's just for some reason, there's just only humans here. Um, I would say like in different parts 
of like the the world. It's like most religions. Have. Overall, it's 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 the actual like, written words are good, but sometimes certain groups don't always adhere to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and as uh, Jerome steps in. Again, you're outside and it's a beautiful, bright, sunny day. But as soon as he gets into the carriage and settles, you again feel and see the light almost like dims where you think a, a cloud cover goes by. And Maggie, you look out the window and it is, it's clear, sunny. Hmm. But the light seems to dim as he gets into your presence again. Is it clear and sunny, DM? Uh, sure. Yeah, oh, it's okay. beautiful outside. Great. Then, all right. You win this round. Weatherman. <laughs> and at that very moment, you hear the whoosh of the reins. Oh, I thought that was just his knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> that was him cracking it. He just, yeah. whoosh. he found your whip. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this. It is mine now. Oh. As he cracks the whip one more time, the horses start to take off. You can feel the ride getting a bump, little bumpy. As he slides that window, he feel, you see his finger curl oh, so around gnarly. the curtain. And I, I can only imagine that um, Maggie is like holding it so he can't open I'm it. I'm so far away from I'm okay, literally no. leaning as far away from anything to do with him. He pulls it open no, with no, one thank finger. You. No, thank you. And turns his head and peers into it with one eye. We're on our way to Chesterfield. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> thank you. Fishburn, for your play-by-play direction. Uh, <laughs> I was going to actually start giving a play-by-play, but I think my voice might get destroyed Come by on, the time. Come on, do a little bit. No, nah, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> anything uh, you would like to inform us of, uh, instructor, uh, Popery? Uh, what is uh, anything that we should know regarding the mission? Uh, where we're going? I mean, obviously we're going to Chesterfield, but to, w- w- any other news about these undead? Is this all a mystery? To me, yes. I'm given what I need to know. And what I need to know is to get you to the destination. Okay, so absolutely no intelligence. Great. We do not need intelligence. We, all we need You're is, right. I didn't take much, so I don't. Yes. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. I apologize. <laughs> me uh, neither. <laughs> uh, technically, I think it I is have one the of highest my, intelligence here. But, it is one um, of my dump stats. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. I, for some reason, still have a plus one. We, I simply just did that in the beginning of the campaign. For the no only reason. intelligence I need is what Sonre decides to bestow upon me. Yes, but we still don't know exact. Okay, very good. Military operation. You have commits. control issues, Katan. You must learn to let go. Yeah, let go. Catan. I'm sure in the future you absolutely will. I have a good feeling about this. <laughs> I'm sure you won't take over your party and all their decisions. That is something we will work on. Good. I will free you of those shackles. Yes. I am grateful for your assistance. I was more curious about if we knew what exactly we were riding into here. I too was binded by those shackles. Again, not what I'm talking about, but... And I got rid of them. Now, I guess that's now what we're talking about. Okay. <clears throat> yes, this is something I will happily discuss don't, with you. Don't look at me like that, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, him or me? Him, obviously. Oh. Jerome is giving me that, like, weird, dead, dead-eyed dead stare. I don't really care for it. I, I think he sees more than us. Like what? You know, I'm a little concerned to know. What else do you see, Jerome? I see all. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you be a little more specific? I see you. Uh-huh. You should, because you have eyes. I so. see who you try to be, and I see who you could be, and I see who you used to be. Okay, so... And I see who Sonre could have you be. I see who you fight to be. I see who your family wants you to be. All conflicting, so much conflict in you, Maggie. Mm, I don't think so. I just really want to be rich and not have to do a lot. Yes. So that's that pretty much it. That is what you think you want. Yeah, it is. That is what present Maggie wants. And past and future. Yeah. Yeah. Future. Definitely. Couldn't say. You don't know what is in store for you, Maggie. 
I do. I know that we're going to go, you're going to go fight some undead. We're going to watch, come back, sign my little paper, and off I go. Mm. Mm -hmm. Easy. Perhaps. Yeah. If Sonray wills it. Okay. Well, do you have to like do a special pray to get Sonray to will that? I pray constant to Sonray for her blessing. (laughs) Sounds really needy. (laughs) Something you would know about. Probably annoys the crap out of her, if just saying. I wouldn't know. She's never spoken to me. She will. Uh, yes. When the time is right, Sonray deems it. You will hear her voice. The resounding entire, inside your head. The entire constantly. time he <laughs> speaks to me, there's always this like forced smile where he's like, you are a important member of this church and I will respect you. <laughs> but he doesn't. Like, you he, give he, me the he actually, babies. Catan can't stand the, like, zealousness of some people. He understands, like, the importance of it and he does want to be, like, a religious figure, but he wasn't raised that way and he, he just looks at these people and just goes, oh my God, you're so fucking creepy. But he just smiles, mm-hmm, yep. And he kind of gives a wide-eyed look at her and just like, mm-hmm, yep. Excellent. About how long until we reach um, Chesterfield? As he says this to Fishburne. You see the finger go around the the curtain again again. and pull it open slowly. Oh, God. We're about four hours out. Excellent. I will take four short rests. (laughs) Uh, Plenty of time for us to reflect. Quietly. Yes. We will quietly reflect. Ooh, you yes, know what? I, I know, take out a compact mirror. <laughs> I know of a four-hour prayer that we all need to do in our head. So you know that prayer, right? And he winks at uh, Maggie. Yeah, the super quiet one where nobody speaks out loud. That one, yes. Yeah. And all look in different directions and not at each other or into their souls or their pasts or their futures or whatever or other present. stuff. Or present. Or, or possible or, futures. Yep, let's possible start right now. Yeah, Here we that, go. And Katan looks out the window at the sun and blinds himself staring at the sun because it's less painful than being inside this carriage. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> it's tinted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're in, tinted windshields. You're in a you're you are in a dim lit carriage at this point. Okay, does a guard pull us over and give us a ticket because that's not like street legal? <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with the windows. There's no window on the carriage. Yeah, it's it's his aura. It's coming off of this weirdo. Uh, he sticks his head out the window like a dog. <laughs> Doesn't get you far enough away from it. Tongue <laughs> flapping in the wind. <laughs> yeah, what were you, you hear from uh the outside of the carriage. I will say, Jerome, it's always uh, difficult to give you rides. It is a little harder to see, even though it's bright as day out. It is not dark on the path. You are still guided by Sonray's light. It oh, is no, it's definitely a little darker. I Slightly. <laughs> I look. It's like I'm wearing dark shades on my eyes. Isn't that? Wait. Could be an eye. That could be a thing. Shade eyes. Yes, mm. that could be a thing, Fishburn. That sounds dumb. Mm. Always What's, quick to judge. It does. Better names than that. Hmm. Magazine. I that's, call you magazine. That's not my name, <laughs> so no. Hmm. Hold on. No, yes, that don't. is the name that Sonray would like me to call you. No, it's not. It that is. isn't. That can't be right because my name is Magnolia. So Magison sounds good. Magison is not Thank my you, name. Thank you, Fishburn. No, I mean, I mean, we we actually have a nickname for Sonray. We call her the Dawn Flower. So I think Magnolia is a perfectly fine name because it's your Thank, name. Thank and you. Is yeah. literally a flower. I know. Thank you. So I'm not sure why we need to be just changing people's names oh. without their permission. Sonray spoke to you about this. Uh, no, 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 she did not. I'm just inferring that maybe we shouldn't be uh, just changing people's names without their consent. That feels um, yeah, thanks. a little it's not allowed. intrusive. <clears throat> names are meaningless. Then we shouldn't change them. Or should we? <laughs> <sighs> um, if you change. don't call me by my name, I will be filing a report when I get mm. back. We so don't actually me. have these here. They just... Well, they just flagate people. I um, will be saying something to somebody in And charge. I will definitely change things here when I'm in charge. <laughs> 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 because this place, I have been here for four years. And let me tell you something, it sucks. <laughs> it really sucks. I have nowhere else to go. Uh, and with that, four hours go by. Thank God. Of the most <laughs> God. 
Uh, <laughs> but it feels like eight. <laughs> yeah, well, it feels like four days. Torturous. Honestly. Uh, especially because you can't really tell when the sun was starting to go down or not. Uh, and as you feel the carriage start to slow down, uh, you hear Chester from outside, or Chester, uh, you hear Fishborn from outside. Well, everybody, we're pulling up and, um, yeah, there's a, there's a plump man outside uh, kind of waving his arms. Do you, Jerome, do you want me to stop or do you want me just to uh, <clears throat> uh, continue on over him? Uh, does it seem like he's in some sort of peril, Fishburn? Mm, let me look with uh Well, he will be if we run him over. So yes, I think you should stop. Yeah, he looks he looks I mean, he's waving his arms kind of weird. I mean, yeah. No, yeah. Now, no, as, don't just stop for strangers. What if he like wants to get in? As as he says this though, Katan does look out the window because he starts to think like, well, this could be a fucking ambush. Like he goes right back in the military mentality where he's like, Oh, actually, maybe we should run him over. So uh Katan looks at the situation. Uh, you see a uh, kind of tattered clothed uh, gentleman kind of running towards uh, you like on this on the road running towards the carriage waving his hands up in the air um insight check I mean I, do I get the impression that there's anything fishy about this I could say you can give a perception check to see if there's okay anything mysterious afoot Roll the 16 plus one. So it's a 17. 17. Um, no, it just looks like this guy has like some cuts and bruises on him. So it definitely looks like he is trying to escape something and get your attention. Very good. Uh, uh, yes, Fishburne is correct. There's a man out here who appears to be harmed. Um, he does not appear to be a, be a bandit. Um, I never believed Fishburne to be lying about the situation. So we should stop and help this person. I'm sure that's what... Uh, I'm sure Sonre would be uh, most appreciative of us helping the needy. Yes, always. Sonre wants I to spread help, her light. Do you mean just like maybe giving him a little bit of like directions or like some coin or like? Yeah, let's let's see what happens when we help this, the the wounded man on the street. And I and just we'll... I don't really want like more people in here. It's already pretty tight in here. There so there is like, room. There isn't really room though because like I need to be able to spread out my legs because I get cramps. So. I need to have room, so I'm sorry. I already kind of booked this out, so I think we should just keep going. Uh, Fishburn, please uh, stop the cart. Please don't stop the cart. I outrank her. I That's not how this Jerome. works. Jerome. Fishburn, please pull over. No, please. Excellent. No. He outranks Fishburn. all of us. And you hear him pull. Yo, Nelly. <laughs> oh. Is the horse's name Nelly? Nope. It, nope. <laughs> not a single one's named Nelly. <laughs> No, that is Fishburne Jr. <laughs> <laughs> and Fishburne Senior. <laughs> and we're not sure what that means. <laughs> Both named Nelly. Uh, as the carriage slows <laughs> down. Whoa, Nellies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the you can hear someone rapping on the uh well, there's like yo, yo, you know. <laughs> Just rapping. Uh, on the carriage door. Help, please, please. Uh Jerome will open the door. And start taking steps outside. Katan follows behind him. I will stay inside. And he yes. has like his hand out, like back away, because like he still was a little like. And and what seems to be the problem, sir? How can we assist you? Yes, my the, child, my my son, my son is 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 in the forest, and, and there's been sightings of uh, undead. Please, you you must help me. Why is your son in the forest? We live in the forest. I, he ran away from me. Like, what? what? <laughs> Just what is your son doing in the forest? You're a terrible father. <laughs> Listen, yes, I know something they, about terrible fathers. That's where they live. <laughs> that's where we live in the forest. Just live in the forest. Okay. Well, we're like, you know, it's a village with a forest around it. Okay. He just, it, he's a kid. I don't. <laughs> he ran away from you. Excellent. Okay. Uh, now I understand. I'm like, so well, he's a shitty he's, kid. <laughs> yeah. Just you're a bad father and he's, so he deserves this. So, <laughs> so is what he, I hear. Sounds like he's a dumb, dumb idiot yeah, kid. So Sonray, says, help those, Sonray helps those who help themselves. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sonray, Sonray helps are you, are you Are you priests or of some sort? Uh, uh, yes, we are from uh, the, the Order of Sonray and, and we have come to actually handle the situation with the undead. However, uh, you know, ha ha dealing with the uh, those who have already died is, 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 uh, Katan. Is, you say my son's dead. No, I'm saying that we should help him first because he's still alive. Katan. But I was cut off by this man. Yes, of course. Take a breath. I, I, 
do. Con- it's what? Take a breath. Good. Can I stop? Now exhale slowly. This is great for the audio. Now, it's quite a breath. I have excellent lung capacity. Now, yes. We address the situation and re engage with the man. Um, we have reached our destination. Not we- me. No, I'm... <clears throat> Re-engage with the man. You don't have to say what you're thinking, Good on. Uh, but oh. I don't know how to roleplay otherwise. <laughs> <Yes>. uh, <laughs> <clears throat> I am so sorry. My instructor is correct. I, I should listen to his guidance more often. Sir, what is your name? <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn it, Jake. Here we go. Mr. Fuck. Jake. <laughs> Mr. Fuck. F-U-C-H. Yeah, <laughs> it's Fook. <laughs> Mr. Fook. <laughs> son of a... What does your son look like? What direction did he run off? And do you have any other information <laughs> that can give us to help us find him? My, my, my son and is... what is his name? <laughs> his name is Fook Jr. <laughs> Fook, Fook Jr. <laughs> Excellent. Actually, no, his name is Sook. Fook, Fook and Sook, okay. Yeah. My, my, my wife's name is... Duke. Oh my God. Your wife's a Duke. You oh, no. God, it's Duke. <laughs> Sounds like a beautiful family. Fook. Yeah. Fook, Duke, and Sook. <laughs> Lovely names. Wonderful. I they are meaningless. The <laughs> <laughs> they are very meaningless. But beautiful names, nonetheless. <laughs> he will change them. You know what? Hey, I got everyone else's names. All right. Except for the main people that we interact with. Got it. Not the main person. Okay. This one that I kind of just threw out. All right. Oh Shut up. God. Let me let me weave my story the way I want to weave it. Uh-huh. And you play through it. And then when you DM, I'll ask you every single person's name. And if you don't have them, Ben, guess what? Fook you. <laughs> 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 A nice job. Oh Full circle. <laughs> um, uh, yes, Mr. Fook, we will attempt to go find your son. Uh, I can't. Uh, we will not. Master Sook. Uh, as soon as we um no way please point which, which direction did he go he like points at the forest he's went somewhere in this forest that direction okay and now Jake is continuing to move his finger like further 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 yeah, away because well, he <laughs> ran into a forest and I couldn't find him so he's in the forest okay excellent uh <clears throat> Fook we will find your son rest assured and he's going to take Fook's hands and put one of them in between his two. Oh, his hand's dead. <laughs> and F- Fook will start to feel the intense it's like, burn. Ow, ow, why are you doing, what, ow? Yes. Ow, can Fook. you let go of my hands, please? That burns. Yes, of course. What, okay. Are, Do you you're, not letting, in, you're not letting go, though. Do you believe that Sonre will rectify the situation? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, I, I 100% believe that. Now, can I get my hands back, please? He'll hold for just another beat longer and then release. Ow! Does his hand look visibly harmed, or is it just like red? Just red. It's not. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. not like. Yeah. Why he, are he you didn't... so hot? I get that question a lot. No, not you. I have are you talking charisma. to me, Sir? Dr- no. Wait, I I'm sorry. My head out. <laughs> no, no. He's like. He's. Have you touched his plate mail or skin? Ew, it's no. Like, oh my god. Ew. It's like hot. Like, like touching a a, a stove top. Yes, he is a cleric, cleric of Sonore. Um. We are, we literally worship the light. Light carries energy and heat. Anyway, we don't question it. It is by Sonre's hand that she has made me complete. Exactly. Oh. We just don't question it. It's uh, weird. Let's help, let's save your son. Yeah. We're going to go uh, do that is, now. Is, is, do you need me here or can I, can I go back to the city or the town? Um, Chesterfield. Honest, I don't, I think you've done everything you could do at this point. You should stay home just in case he returns home. Do you have other kids? Yes, I have four. Oh. Are they missing two? No, they should Thank be at God. home with my <laughs> so wife. So you have five kids total? Yes. All right, guys, I think this is fine. You can just let that one. Oh. Well, I mean. Well, we've given birth to 24, but See, only five have made it. I rest my case. Like, it's not that big of a deal to lose like one or two. The wolves are vicious out here. <laughs> See? Oh, my. <laughs> I just thought it was just just a, like a standard disease thing. But no, they're all eaten by wolves. <laughs> okay, are there wolves in the in the woods too? Are there undead wolves? I don't think so. It, uh, I've, I've, we've only seen one or two walk roaming around uh, uh, in humanoid. 
for uh, we I don't really stay around to find out. Uh, Instructor Popery, I advise that we uh, rescue the child immediately and then return to town and discover more about the situation. Although I would love to gather more intel before we begin, um, I believe that the the life of the child uh, should be put at a priority. Uh, do you agree? Yes. I wish you would just say that with slightly more confidence. I never quite know whether or not I'm doing the right thing with you. For it is out of our hands. It is not me you're trying to impress. It is not me you're trying. Not impress. Just just a little. You're, aren't you here to guide me? I am here as an instrument of Sonre. I follow her guidance. I follow her path. I have been put here by her grace. And Why do you need him to like you so bad? I, well, he is the instructor, and he determines whether or not I advance through the, the ranks of the Paladin Order. Okay, so find the kid, and then uh, you'll... It is not me who will give you the voice. Of course. Let's go find the child, and I think that will help me find the voice. Perhaps. So yes, uh, let's just be off. Uh, please, um, would you like me to lead the way, or Instructor Popery? Would that be... Yeah, you can lead the way. That's fine. Right? Is, shouldn't he go first? Why does everyone just follow me? I feel like this is just going to be faster. I, I, I can show you the last place I saw my son. Yes. That's I what thought. I was asking you to do, but you just vaguely gestured. So please, yes, take us there. Okay. Well, it's just down the road a bit. Okay. Yes, I was, I was attacked by this figure, and then when I came to, my son was gone, and then I, I saw for a brief moment an undead walking in that same direction, but I don't know. Where he went and I... You were attacked by a person. You just told me your son was lost in the woods. Oh, you're tattered and torn and bleeding. I should probably have inferred that. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. This is my first day. You know what? I didn't say that. I'm very good at this. Where's your son? <laughs> I'm losing confidence that my son will be found alive. <laughs> me too. <by> the <laughs> Mr. Fook, please take my hand again. <laughs> no, I'm do you need? So do you need reassurance? No. Uh, you know, I am assured. Good. Is this my first major mission? I would probably say yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, Given my last major mission didn't went, go so great. <laughs> le, le, my uh, encouragement is always here if you need it, Mr. Fook. Thank you. Instructor Potpourri. Instructor Potpourri, yes. Odd name. <laughs> yeah. Odd person. Please, let's, let's be on our way. Coming from you? <laughs> What's wrong with Fook? <laughs> it's a family name. <laughs> it's a generation. Nothing, nothing, wrong, nothing yeah. wrong with a good Fook. <laughs> I'm, I'm Fook the Fifth. Of course you are. <laughs> All the way to my grandpappy, <laughs> yeah. Fook the Second. And then, you know, the first Fook. Yeah. My, you, never, yes. you, always, you, always forget, you never forget your first Fook. My first Fook was a missionary. <laughs> <laughs> my first Fook, Fook, I did missionary, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's already what he said. Damn it, Ben, you ruined it. <laughs> That was the joke. <laughs> what? what? Let's end the episode there. <laughs> what? Might as well. <laughs> and we go off to save the kid. Sprinting by. <laughs> <laughs>